evolution, although it can be a slow process, ensures that the best succeed and the inferior die by the wayside. According to the study of anthropogenesis, mankind's progress has been a two million year evolution. Most of the human ascent has been focused on and indeed the most remarkable advancements resulting from man's ability to hunt, then gather and eventually farm and produce food, most importantly red meat. Today's primary producer is and must be an astute and fully committed agribusiness manager using all the tools and science available to him. One of the most powerful mechanisms available to cattlemen is genetic development, the object being to create the ideal and most efficient type for the prevailing conditions. The Chabray, a breed rapidly gaining profit machine status in the Australian commercial beef production industry, stands at the threshold of completing its evolutionary process. I've been here for about 110 years and the ancestors started off with the Herefords and then they got the Shorthorn. That was fine. Then in the 50s we brought in zebus. Now my dad brought them in and like I said when I was doing that other talk that they were a very interesting exercise because they we had got beautiful big frame cows but we also had every colour in the world and that even shows through a little bit in our herd today. We've still got the odd black one, a bit of brindle coming through. But the zebus were good but they were wild of course, they were very hard to control. Uh, Brahmins followed we had Brahmins next, and we loved our Brahmins, but one day I looked at them and I thought, gee, you know, I'd really like to put something over these, because they were starting to just run out a little bit, and a bit narrow. And we tried Santas, and that didn't work, because they were far too soft. They wouldn't handle this country here at all. Um, and then we are sort of looking around, and I accidentally, just to have a look, went to a Chabray sale, I think it might have even been the first one, not even sure about that, and um, didn't go there to buy or anything, just went to have a look and I really liked what I saw, but I kept saying, oh no, too soft, they're far too soft, they'll never handle our country, couldn't stop myself, up at the finger, only one bed for each one, so we had our two first Chabray bulls. Many Australian cattle producers recognised the demand for the Chabray type before the breed arrived here. Consequently, cattlemen seeking to increase growth and early maturity in their Brahmin herds, renowned for their survivability in harsher areas, were quick to experiment by crossing with Charolais bloodlines when these growthy Europeans were first imported in 1969. Uh, those producers that were, that were quick to realise that the gains that they could get by, by introducing the, the Charolais genetics into their Bosindicus herds in the north and the west and in the, in the harsher environments of our country, so to speak, I do, I do believe that um, the, the producers that thought that the Charolais wouldn't cut it in their area um, turned to Charbrays, they went looking for Charbrays, they thought that the, the script was there, that, that was the right animal for them and I really do feel that they could not find, find the animal that they were looking for. Um, to that, I've uh, been passionate about, about the breed and, and what it can produce and experience it in our own operation, I really do feel that with the work that's been done with the Charbro bead to date and is continuing on, um, w we really do feel that they have a lot to offer and I would encourage those people who, who, are, who are, were early to move and early to see the gains to have another look now, look at consolidating their herds, maybe stepping away from just a two breed rotation and from our experience it, there's definite benefits there in, in the type predictability um, you, are, you are hitting the grid um, a lot more consistently with your Charbray, Charbray cattle and it gives you um, the management and it make, uh, makes it a lot easier. Not to saying there's always an a area there that you can step back into the, to either parent breed um, depending on your focus but um, there are a lot of people I think that, that step away from, from going into crossbreeding because they're worried about where they're going after the first cross. Um, from my experience I'd like to throw up the idea that, that the Charbray, Charbray um, consistent breeding is certainly an alternative and, and one that I'd encourage greatly, speaking from my experience. The results showed huge potential and soon after the Charbray Society of Australia was established in 1977, when it was agreed that purebred matings of registered Charolais and Brahmins with a maximum 75% of either parent breed would be recognised as Charbrays. The steering committee, advised by Professor D.F. Dowling, then UQ's Professor of Veterinary Biometeorology, designed the breeding system specifically to improve beef production and carcass yield, rather than adopt regulations for the convenience of a breed society. 
After three decades of being regarded principally as a blending of Charolais and Brahmin blood, Chabrais have now taken a major step in the process of becoming established as a pure breed in their own right. Just as the Droughtmaster and Santa Gertrudis, for example, have matured beyond their derivative breed origins, a new plan which firms up the requirements to produce a purebred animal will better enable ongoing genetic advancement and consolidate breed consistency. Previous guidelines, which specified that any blending of registered Charolais and Brahmin blood, up to a maximum 75% of either breed, constituted a registrable Chabray, trapped the breed into a perpetual loop of trait variations. The new plan increases progeny predictability and limits current inconsistencies such as coat type. We found with our breeding program that um, using purebred Chabray bulls, we get a more consistent line of animal as well as maintaining the traits of the Chabray with good growth, um, good thickness, good softness, as well as keeping good uh, breeding fertility. We find that we get a good even line of cattle. Um, they suit all markets that we put our cattle in. All our bullocks are sold at two to two and a half year old, direct to works, and um, they, grade, they grade well, have enough fat, and, and reach their target weights. Pretty easy. The Society's new plan for the ongoing evolution of this outstanding Austrian beef industry success story emphasises registered Chabray over registered Chabray as the path ahead. Although the Society's plan for the future development of the breed now focuses on Chabray over Chabray matings, it acknowledges there will always be a need for particular Chabray herds to occasionally reintroduce either parent breed, depending on their individual market requirements. This flexibility has been taken into consideration in developing the new breeding plan, which creates classes ranging from C1 to C5 to replace the earlier system, which used a confusing method of counting the generations of Chabray blood in an animal's pedigree. The Chabray find is particularly good because it's your, it, you, in my opinion, you're getting the best of the uh, genetic gain, you're getting Boss, Boss Indigus and a European cross. We saw years ago that the benefit of crossing uh, Boss Indigus and Boss Taurus, uh, namely uh, Hereford Brahmin or secondly um, Shorthorn Brahmin which our Santa Gertrudis or our uh, uh, drought masters to an extent derive from. Um, so here we are, we've got the benefits of the European and uh, the Boss Indigus crosses. Uh, the Chabray, I believe, uh, to be a, a very uh, stable breed um, as a crossbred to breed from. You've, uh, Charbray bulls have been used for quite some period of years now and in a mob of cattle uh, you don't get the tail in your Charbray cross cattle that you may get uh, in your other European Cross breeds. Breeders seeking to establish Chabray stud operations are now encouraged to source their seed stock from pure registered Chabray bloodlines, rather than backtracking the evolutionary process and breeding up from the original Charolais Brahmin breeds. The new plan effectively closes the chapter on the breed's evolution and focuses on its perfection. Two million years ago, man discovered he could increase his red meat production by whacking a wild animal on the head with a bone. Now, with the emergence of the purebred Chabray, the Australian cattleman, through carefully planned genetic development, has created the consummate beef production machine.